Hey everyone, it is Brian here from Strigler Photography. So I am going to jump on live today. Um, I don't know how long I'll be able to stay on here. Um, I am home with two of my children, one of which is sick and currently sleeping. So he may be waking up at any moment and coming here screaming. So I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try my best to get through all this before before any of that craziness happens. And my son is also watching uh, TV in the room, so if you hear any of that, just try to ignore it. I will try to blast over the, the sound of all of it. So anyway, um, I hope you guys had a freaking awesome Christmas. I hope it was amazing. I hope you got wonderful gifts. Um, I had a post that a lot of people were telling me all the cool things that they got, and it's just, it's always cool to hear the different things and what people like, and oh yeah, it, my, <laughs> this kid, my poor son, uh, he was sick on Thanksgiving and actually went to the hospital on Thanksgiving and now he, he was sick on Christmas and has been sick for the past um, six or seven days. So the, the poor kid, <laughs> the poor kid. Uh, we're hoping that he's uh, over it now. He hasn't had fever yet today. Um, so we're hoping it's uh, all done because uh, it's not been much fun. So anyway, um, got people jumping on, that's awesome. We are talking about five images five common wedding images that get messed up all the time, all the time, and uh, some relatively easy ways to make sure that doesn't happen. I mean, you pay a photographer all this money to get these photos, but sometimes it's the things we do that prevent the photographer um, from getting, getting those good photos. Um, so I'm gonna talk about five of them. There's probably a lot of other ones I could talk about, but these are the ones that jumped into my head, so we are going to, you know, go on that. So hopefully this is helpful. Um, if you have any thoughts at any point throughout it, feel free to say something. Um, I'm probably going to, this might last 20 minutes or so. I've got a bride that I'm talking to at 2 o'clock, so I have to make sure I'm ready for that as well. So anyway, let's jump into these five and let's look at them first. So this is the list of the five different ones we're going to be talking about. Um, and again, there are plenty of other ones, but these were the ones that popped in my head. I was going through, through some photos and saw some of these and I was like, oh, that's a good one. So we're going to talk about the first kiss. We're going to be talking about uh, the dances and I'm mainly talking about like the first dance, the uh, father, daughter and the, sorry, I got distracted. So th I'm not talking about like everyone on the dance floor type dance photos. I'm talking about like those ones that are one-on-one -on -one important dance ones. Um, dipping, this doesn't apply to a, to a whole lot of things, but it, there, it does, it seems like every wedding there's a dip photo in there somewhere, so you might as well knock it out and do it, do it well, right? Uh, family photos, if you have little kids, which I'm pretty sure almost every wedding I do a photo with some little kid in there, and sometimes it's really easy and sometimes it is extremely difficult. And walking down the aisle. Okay, so those are the five that we're gonna hit. Um, basically, we'll have for each one some of the things that get messed up with it, and then a real quick um, way to fix it underneath. Okay, let's go to the first one. So the, the first kiss. Um, it's always funny to see the different ways this happens with people. Some people are like really into the first kiss and some are really embarrassed and don't want to do it. Um, so as far as like for, for photography, if it is too short, if it's like, boom, I'm done and I'm, I'm in and I'm out and I'm done with that, um, that's difficult to time that photo and get it correct. You know, I mean, to nail it for that half a second that you're touching can be very difficult. And I mean, you're only getting one photo if you're lucky. So to fix the quick part, hold it for a few seconds, okay? I mean, it doesn't have to be like a minute long kiss or anything, but you know, hold it for a few seconds. And if you have to just, you know, back up for a second and then go back in and just hold it for another few seconds. Um, Cause usually how I shoot it is I'll shoot like a wide shot first and I'll, I'll take a few frames. And then if they're still going, I'll zoom in and get a tight shot. So it's nice to have that variety. Um, so again, I would, I would make sure it's not too horribly short. The next one, um, I don't know how many times I've had weird, weird officiants like peeking through a hole or just hiding in the background. Um, and it, it's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, your officiant's probably someone extremely important to you, but sometimes 
I mean, most people probably want this to be just a photo of the two of them and not just have some weird person, not weird, some person kind of just awkwardly in the background of it. Um, so as far as how to do that, I've seen it pretty well. Like sometimes you have to talk to the officiant and have them do it. But if they can step to the side real quickly or even step to the side before they say kiss the bride or whatever, then they're going to be out of the shot and it's not going to be like this just weird eye poking through or half a head hiding behind you type thing. That's not that big of a deal, but all right. So uh, this happens quite a bit where the groom might kind of turn you sideways and then all we're getting is a photo of the back of his head. Um, unless you have two photographers and one of them happens to be on the side angle, but you probably want to see both of your faces. So as far as that goes, just try and have him like step straight into you and try and stay completely straight um, without turning. And the last one on this one, sometimes like if you throw your arms up around his shoulder to give him a big hug while you're kissing, your arms and shoulders will actually block a good portion of your face. So it's okay to hug and do all that, but I mean, keep both arms down or keep the front arm down so we can actually see your face. All right, so again, I'm kind of rushing through all this. So hopefully, again, if any, if any of this is helpful, if any of this is really, uh, you know, makes sense, please make sure you're commenting or if you have a question about one of them, feel free to say something so I know, I know that it's making sense. I don't, want, I don't want this to be confusing. All right, moving on to the next one, dancing. So um, I was actually, this happens a lot. I know this is a very special moment and it's intimate um, and it's all, it also can be very awkward, but a lot of times I see people just talking during the whole dance and that's not necessarily a bad thing, but your facial expressions, if you're just having a conversation and you're talking about this and that, you're probably not making the best facial expressions, um, at least not to show none that really show the emotion of this first dance. So it is okay. I mean, it's okay to have that conversation with your mom while you're dancing with her or with your dad. Um, but I wouldn't talk the entire time and I'd really be very careful of what your face is doing. Um, and I mean, just try and enjoy the moment. I mean, just maybe sit there, put your head on his shoulder, um, look into his eyes, whatever, but make sure you're getting some of that. And it's not just like this whole conversation. Um, I've also had people look around a lot. So they're like looking over their shoulder, looking over this way, looking over that way. And the, the problem with that is it's like you're disconnected from each other. I mean, how would you feel if you're talking to someone or with someone and they're, they're looking away the entire time? They're not paying attention to you at all. Uh, so make sure you are looking at each other some and there is that interaction between each other. And the last one, um, if it's too short, it's really hard to make sure you – I get all the photos I want and all the different things. I mean, I, I move around, I get different angles, I do different things with lighting. Um, and again, if you are talking and stuff, that's very limited of what photos I can get if it's like a one minute song. And then you have the people that go for like 10 minutes and that's just way too long. No one wants to sit there and watch you guys dance for that long. So I find that anywhere three to four minutes is a pretty good length. Okay. And again, I'm, I'm talking quickly and I don't mean to. So if I need to explain something again, just put something in the comments and I will try and back up and say it again. Okay. So the big old dip, it's, it's amazing how many people struggle with this because it's a weird thing. I mean, how often in your real life are you dipping someone or being dipped? Um, and there's more tips that I usually give people before they do this, but this is just kind of some quick tips with this. So the first one is, um, it's kind of like doing the kiss. If you turn, if you're turned away from the camera, you're not going to be seen. So if he starts to dip you and he turns you back away towards the camera, all, all the camera's going to see is like your legs and his waist and like part of his upper body. You're not going to see any faces. So when you're dipping, you want to try and stay horizontal to the camera so we can see like all of you. So don't, don't go away. Um, the next one what I see a lot is the brides will just go completely limp. Like they've lost control of their bodies and they are just like a damsel in distress type thing. And they're just like flopping around and it just looks really weird. 
So try and make sure your back is straight and don't let your head just flop backwards. Um, look up at him, keep your head kind of up so you can see him, but just don't go completely limp. And the other one is people will, will try and go extreme with these dips and they're like, let's see if we can touch your head to the ground. There's really no reason for that. I mean, if you just go at a 45 degree angle, which isn't that much, um, that's perfectly fine and that works. So don't go nuts with it. All right. I think I've got two more on here. All right. Oh man, kids. Kids can be so difficult to take photos of, especially the young ones. I mean, older ones, you can kind of bribe and explain stuff to them, but sometimes the younger ones, they just don't understand and they don't have that, that control yet. So you have to basically trick them into doing what you want them to do. Um, and it, sometimes they, you don't want them to get upset and you don't want them like looking in all, all different directions. So a lot of the times what I do is I try to uh, get their attention and there's a, a few different things you can do. Um, sometimes I'll talk to them, I'll say their names. Um, I may ask them what their favorite TV show is or cartoon character or whatever, um, so that they'll in, engage with me and be looking at me. And then I, if I say something about their favorite TV show or whatever, that's gonna make them get excited or whatever. Sometimes I just make weird noises like their dogs, which is really sad to say. But if you just make weird noises, people tend to look at you. Um, this is what I've actually should have done on Saturday, but I didn't think about it. This one little boy had a, a toy with him and I saw him playing with it earlier in the day. And if I had had that toy and I was holding that toy above my head or like dancing it around or something, like this kid would have been a lot easier to deal with than what he was. So any of that stuff, um, you could also have like a relative or friend of theirs that they know kind of get their attention, uh, which we'll talk about. There's problems with that later. Okay. So while you're trying to get the kid to look, often everyone else will be looking at the kid. So sometimes I'll get a photo of the, with the, the child looking at me and then I have half the, the adults staring at the kid. So if you're an adult, don't stare at the kid, stare at the camera while I try to get the kid to look at the camera as well. Um, and the last one, like I said, if you have someone trying to help or get people's attention, don't have them be like 10 feet away because then everyone's going to be looking off to the side. Have the helper or whatever directly above the camera or behind the camera so they're looking towards the camera and not just off in some strange direction. Okay, and our very last one. I actually made a whole video on this and I think it's a, uh, you should, you probably get it in an email at some point. Um, but walking down the aisle, people mess this stuff up all the time. Um, and this isn't just for the bride, this is for uh, bridesmaids, groomsmen, whoever, you know, anyone walking down the aisle. And it's just a, it's a difficult thing because people are coming at you. I can't really move around. I don't have all, a whole lot of time. So uh, some of the things you can do to make sure that I can get photos of everyone is make sure you are spread out. Don't rush down all at once. Um, because if you're just packed in one behind the other, then I can't see all of you and I don't have time to take photos of this person and that person. So usually a good, I don't know, 10 seconds from when one person starts to the next person starts is usually pretty good. Um, also, when you're walking, don't speed walk. <laughs> you, you can walk at a normal pace. You don't have to walk like a slug or anything, but don't like speed walk down the aisle because then it's really difficult to get those photos. Um, a big one I tell for the bride, cause a lot of brides want that reaction, the groom's reaction when, when she pops out. Um, and if it's just a single photographer, it's hard to get that reaction plus her walking. So one big tip I tell people, if you are just having a single photographer, if the bride will just stop, stop and wait until she sees the photographer spin around and look at her, that will give uh, the photographer time to get that reaction and then have plenty of time to catch her walking down the aisle as well. Okay, and then the last part of this, um, make sure you are looking up and smiling. I know it's scary that you might trip and fall in front of everyone, but you're probably not going to. So make sure you're looking up and to make sure that you look happy as well. Don't just look like you're grumpy and upset. Make sure you're smiling. And it's funny how many people, like I said, it's, not, it's probably, they don't do it on purpose, they're just not thinking about it. 
So make sure you are looking up and you are smiling while you're walking down the aisle. Okay, Whew, I feel like I'm out of breath and I just rushed through all of that. So those are just five photos. So if you have other photos that you are concerned about, other photos that worry you that something bad is gonna happen, you don't feel like you, you know how to do it right, um, feel free to reach out to me and I will try and explain it to you in either through a personal message or maybe I'll make a whole video. I don't know. Because um, again, guys, I'm here to help you. I'm here to give you information because I want you to have a wonderful wedding and I want you to enjoy it and have fun and I want you to look back at your photos and get all teary-eyed and just thrilled, whatever, you know. Um, so I'm going to wait for one more minute and see if anyone else has any comments or questions about anything and then I'm going to probably jump off of here and get ready for my uh, meeting with the bride. Um, but again, guys, I plan... I plan on making these videos maybe maybe once a week. We'll see how things go. But I mean, if you have something you want me to talk about, you just have to make sure that you let me know that. And I will try and cover anything that is helpful for you. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything while I'm waiting. I'm trying to think of anything else crazy going on. Uh, oh, yeah, it's almost the end of the year. So hopefully you guys have a great New Year's Eve. Have some fun. Make some memories. Um, if you know anyone else that gets engaged, feel free to invite them to join the group or to let me know, and I would love to talk to them as well. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I can't think of anything. I'm still on, like, I just finished three weddings in December, and I've got two more in January, so it is still going strong, but I'm going to try and get on here as much as I can. All right, guys, I don't see anything, so thank you for those of you that watch. Thank you for those that are watching this after it recorded. If there's anything I can do for you, just let me know and have a wonderful, wonderful day.